Hey everybody! Welcome to our series on ultrasound imaging equipment and their use. This video focuses on the components of the transducer, the primary instrument in medical sonography, its individual components, and their maintenance operation and use. Let's start by defining transducer. A transducer is any device that converts one form of energy into another. For instance, a light bulb is a transducer because it converts electrical energy into light and heat. In ultrasound imaging, the transducer is the key device which converts electrical energy into the mechanical energy that produces the sound waves, which bounce off body tissues and make echoes. It also receives the echoes and sends them to a computer that uses them to create a sonogram. There are several different types of transducers, which we will discuss in a different video, that may look different and not have all of the components discussed here, but they all share the main components for creating the ultrasound signal. Now, let's discuss the basic components of transducer construction. There are seven main components. The protective housing or case, the electrical shielding, the acoustic insulator, the acoustic lens, the piezoelectric element, the matching layer, and the damping element or backing layer. It's easiest to think of these components as a series of layers that each have a unique function. We'll start with the piezoelectric crystal at the center and work our way out to the transducer's protective housing. The transducer crystal has piezoelectric properties and is the most critical component of an ultrasound transducer. Piezoelectric properties means that when electrical energy hits the crystal, it expands and contracts in thickness, which causes compression and produces sound waves that travel into the body. When echoes return, the crystal vibrates again, converting those sound waves back into electrical signals that create an image. It can perform this key function because the piezoelectric element is made of materials like lead zirconate titanate, or PZT, that are subject to what is called the piezoelectric effect. This means it has a high capacity to turn electrical energy into mechanical energy, which you may remember is the energy in sound waves. This is because PZT has an asymmetric atomic structure. This asymmetry creates natural dipoles, or regions of positive and negative charge within the material. When an alternating electrical current, or AC, is applied to the crystal, the electric field interacts with the dipoles, causing them to align or shift within the crystal lattice and distort or deform the crystal. The alternating current stimulates the crystal to repeatedly expand and contract in response to the changing electric field. This quality of the piezoelectric effect creates stronger ultrasound waves and makes it more responsive to the returning echoes. PZT specifically is a good choice for the piezoelectric crystal because it has a higher Curie temperature, which is the temperature above which piezoelectric properties are lost. This allows it to operate reliably under varying environmental and clinical conditions without a drop in performance. You should also note that the piezoelectric crystal comes in different thicknesses, which affects its imaging ability. A thinner crystal has a smaller physical size and naturally resonates at shorter wavelengths, which corresponds to higher frequencies, making thinner crystals ideal for imaging superficial structures like the thyroid. However, these waves also attenuate more quickly, meaning they don't penetrate deep into tissue. A thicker piezoelectric crystal has a larger physical size, so it resonates at longer wavelengths, which corresponds to lower frequencies, making it better suited for imaging deeper structures like the liver or kidneys, because lower frequencies experience less tissue attenuation. The next component moving toward the front of the transducer is the matching layer. This layer sits between the crystal and the acoustic lens, improving sound wave transmission by reducing the impedance mismatch between the two. Impedance is a measure of how much resistance a material offers to sound waves. If there is a large difference in impedance between two materials, most of the energy created is reflected back rather than transmitted. 
Matching layers are designed to have an acoustic impedance value between that of the crystal and the tissue, so it can act as a bridge to gradually transition the impedance between the piezoelectric crystal and the patient. Now we will discuss the damping element or backing layer, which is located towards the back of the transducer behind the crystal. It is made of acoustically absorbent material, such as epoxy resin infused with heavy particles like tungsten or lead, or other composites specifically engineered for high acoustic attenuation. Its job is to absorb stray vibrations, preventing echoes from lingering. The damping element works to absorb vibrations that can persist beyond the initial pulse and create what are called ringing effects. Ringing effects and their relationships to the quality factor, or QF, will be discussed in another lesson. By absorbing the excess mechanical vibrations from the crystal immediately, it reduces unwanted echoes or additional sound waves that overlap with the returning echoes, which improves the signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. Though not a component of all transducers, some single crystal transducers include an acoustic lens. The acoustic lens is a thin, curved layer of material placed between the matching layer and the outer shells of the transducer. Its primary purpose is to focus the ultrasound beam to improve image resolution and enhance visualization of specific areas of interest. The final components of all transducers all encase its inner components and are the acoustic insulator, the electrical shielding, and protective outer housing. The outer housing keeps all the internal components safe from wear, tear, and contamination, ensuring the transducer performs at its best and provides a smooth, safe surface for patient contact. Part of the protective shell is the electrical shielding, which prevents patient exposure to high-voltage internal components and reduces outside electrical interference. Beneath the electrical shielding is the acoustic insulator. The acoustic insulator is made of materials that dampen vibrations, such as rubber-like polymers or foam-based materials, to insulate the piezoelectric element and to absorb any vibrations that may impact image formation. Maintaining all of these components is essential for patient safety and proper operation of the transducer. After every use, the transducer should be cleaned with a non-abrasive cloth and an approved cleaning solution. It is important to use only manufacturer-recommended disinfectants, avoiding harsh chemicals that could damage the protective housing or crystal. Additionally, you should never use heat-based cleaning methods, such as an autoclave, for cleaning because it will damage the crystal and cause it to lose its piezoelectric properties. Finally, transducers should be stored in a dedicated holder to prevent accidental drops or cable strain. Along with cleaning and storage, you should also be vigilant in observing the condition of the transducer and its performance. Cracks or chips in the protective housing, signal dropout or inconsistent images, and loose cables or connectors need to be detected quickly as they can lead to compromised image quality or, worse, risks to patient safety. In summary, the components of an ultrasound transducer are the piezoelectric crystal, matching layer, damping element, acoustic lens, acoustic insulation, electrical shielding, and protective housing. The piezoelectric crystal generates and receives sound waves and comes in varying thickness which affects the frequency of waves created in their imaging application. The matching layer lowers impedance between the crystal and the patient's tissue. The acoustic lens focuses the sound beam and the damping element sharpens image clarity by reducing excess vibrations. Proper cleaning, storage, and damage prevention are essential for ensuring reliable imaging and patient safety.